So tell us how the 1967 setting lends itself to the story. It's a great question. It's a great question. <laughs> Who's going to jump in? <laughs> well, I think, uh, I mean, part of it was Mike Flanagan wanted to totally take the the Ouija franchise and turn it on its head and do something original. That was the main motivator. But I think in terms of what it does for the audience is that it it lets them presuppose that maybe this is factual because it's set in a historical time and they see these things and they, they say, oh yeah, this is real, I kind of, it's visceral, um, which helps take the audience out of their world and put them in ours. And your character, Alice, uh, holds seances out of her home. So does she believe that she's actually channeling spirits? No, I think at the start of the movie, my character, Alice, is a widow and she's just trying to make ends meet and she's decided to run this sort of seance business out of her house and she employs her two young daughters to help her, you know, pull off her gags and convince people that, that there are ghosts there. But she also thinks she's doing it for uh, a good reason, to help people connect with people they've lost and to give them peace, make them feel happy. I wanted to know from your perspective when you read the script, I know that Mike Flanagan, the director, he kind of based Father Tom on a real priest that he knew, and that you have kind of a backstory, and that's how you can connect with this family. How did you connect with the character? Well, it was, it was interesting to me because uh, Mike presented it to me as that he, he remembered a priest that he knew growing up who was kind of a regular guy. He was the guy that, he was like the cool priest at the uh, parish, and the guy that you wouldn't think was actually a priest, you know? And uh, so he wanted to paint this character that was a little bit um, off the beaten track in terms of, you know, but a genuine guy and, and a guy that was believed in his convictions and everything, just not your typical um, you know, stodgy Catholic priest. Yeah. And so, you know, the relationship between Alice and Tom was very interesting to me. Here's this guy that's kind of, you know, he's, he's locked into a path, but he sees an opportunity. And in much the way, the same way that Ouija is forbidden, then it's forbidden for him to have a relationship. But He's still concerned about their safety and well-being. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting overtones in the whole thing. There is, yeah. And I also like the way that it was shot where, you know, it's a lot of, like, the split diopter and the zooms and stuff like that. Now, did you know about that going in, how it would be shot and how it would look? Well, we had some idea of how it was going to look because Mike and his DP, Viminari, were just so excited to play in this world and, you know, create a visual style and steal things from the past and get to do things that you never get to do in a, in a modern movie. And so I think that was part of it. It elevates the storytelling. It's not just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, I, I you know, <laughs> Mike Flanagan had a, uh, and, and, and uh, the DP had a, had a shot Bible that was about this thick before we even started. So, so we knew what they were going for, but, but filmically, I think it's great because it reminds people, whether they, they've seen it or not, it reminds people of films like The Exorcist and The Omen and, and those very suspenseful horror films that were more psychological than visual. Um, because yeah, of effects and times and yeah yeah